What to consider um, on your first trip to the Philippines when looking at retiring there or moving there um, and haven't got a partner set up yet or somebody you're not, you're going to give it a bit of time so you meet the right person. Um, first thing is you're not going to be 100% where you want to live. Um, so I would stick to if you're going to dip in and try different locations spend at least a week in each one um, you're not going to get enough view of anything in a couple of days i'll tell you that now um, i mean even in cebu mactan is completely different to cebu city um, minglanilia is completely different again and as you've head further south it's different again um, because there's different environments different climates slightly um, the mountainous climate, when you head up into the mountains, you find it's a lot cooler at night. Um, there's lots of different scenarios and different locations with different things going on. Uh, some are better fruit, better veg, all sorts of things that can influence where you eventually want to end up. Tourist traps. Um, I know some expats actually live in Boracay. Um, now, that's got a limit. If you've got a limited budget, you might find it difficult there. But it doesn't mean it's impossible because you don't have to be right amongst the tourists. And also, there is always a cheaper alternative. I think the cheapest accommodation we had, uh, which was organized by one of the guys for an airsoft tournament, uh, was 20 pesos a night or 60 pesos. A night. It was nothing. We stopped there one night and then we went to a proper hotel the second night because it, I couldn't sleep there. It was. It felt like you're going, going to fall through the floor. Um, but the point is, when you get there, you'll see that different locations have different things going on. When you arrive and you, if you're looking for retirement, be aware, well, even not just for retirement, but the medical facilities. Um, a friend of mine got sick on uh, Bohol Island and the hospital facilities were poor to say the best um, to the point that he actually got an overnight ambulance and ferry to get to a hospital in Cebu um, they actually misdiagnosed him um, and mis mistreated him in the hole um, they actually dehydrated him by, mis by mistake I can't say by mistake because they did it on purpose um, they advised him not to drink any fluids when he got to Cebu, um, he was already, already heavily dehydrated. And it's not the first time somewhere remote where the medical advice has been absolutely shocking, um, or even the care. Um, there was somebody in a motorcycle accident where his toes would be mangled up. And when he went into Manila um, from a remote location on Luzon, the doctor was arguing that it, with him to ask him if he'd stitched it up himself because it was that bad <laughs> um, but the point being is medical care is important and it's only when you need it you realize how important so we have where we live we've got a hospital within 15 minutes both of our kids have been born there um, it's not fantastic but it has everything we need and then if we've got something more serious we actually within 30 minutes of a major hospital in Cebu City itself. Um, for us, we prefer living just outside of the city because uh, it cuts down the amount of smog and traffic and everything else that goes with the city. Uh, plus, there's a lot more traffic reports and stuff because I don't like wearing a helmet on my motorbike. Um, where once you hit Minglanilia, people leave you alone most of the time. Um, they're not really bothered. So there's that side of things, the health factor. Um, next thing is what is there to do? Um, I know people that I thought I'm going to get a boat, I saw beautiful water, and then they spend the next 20 years trying to build the boat and sort of lost interest and it's never going to get completed. If you're going to do it, get five other people together or ten other people and but buy one between you. Um, it works well for people to do diving because I know um, Simon up in Mactan, 
I think they've got a boat between about six of them uh, for diving. They're not expensive when you do it that way, but also you don't lose the the drive to get it finished um, because it's not just you on your own going. There goes more money on a new engine or whatever you need. With six a year or ten a year, you're all like, "Come on, let's get it, get down there this Saturday and work on it." And it keeps you busy because that's another thing, keeping busy. Um, if you go provincial, getting interested in farming and stuff, you might find it interesting. Um, but one of the biggest problems for people in the Philippines is boredom um, within the expat community, and obviously a lot of the locals as well because life's mundane most of the time. Um, there's a, a lot of family are supported by RFWs, overseas Filipino workers. So as such, they don't need to work, and actually the family discourage it sometimes because it doesn't pay enough locally. Um, me, I encourage working regardless. Um, if someone's got the capability to sit at home and make money online, good for, good for them because they'll earn more than they will in most jobs locally. Um, but the whole point is the only way you'll get somebody to develop is actually encourage them to work um, that's why I have a work ethic regardless of how much it's paying <laughs> um, but you have that transportation is another important one another good reason Cebu is important because it's got a hub for um, direct flights into um, different parts of the world I used to be able to go from um, Cebu to Qatar, from Qatar to London, um, but then there was some argument over some extra fees. I think they're trying to tax international flights more, so as such, they they basically stopped flying. Then you had to go to Manila, and personally, I wouldn't use PAL Airways ever again, um, but the point is, you have to go to Manila, then from Manila, internationally and I don't like Manila Airport either um, so I generally go Cebu, Hong Kong and then Qatar, Cathay Pacific whatever it is and out to the UK so that's another thing because at certain times you're going to want flights it, it could be a relative sick where back home it could be um, you want to go home for Christmas, whatever the reason, and the less flights you have to do, the less hassles it is, um, because they're going to be long haul flights. So if you can do it in one or two flights, it's much better than doing it in three. Um, so that's another reason, because uh, also you have the problem if you're on an, a smaller island, they may not fly every day. Somebody was asking me to help them with a flight recently, um, and they'd left it till the Sunday to arrange it. Uh, it was a Saturday. It was Saturday, and they wanted to the flight Sunday, or that Saturday. There was no flight Sunday, and all the Saturday flights were three times more than he was willing to pay <laughs> because he left it till that day. So, and that's just an internal flight, um, which can also run hours long. Uh, flights get cancelled. Um, flights get overbooked on purpose. All that sort of stuff goes on on internal flights. International doesn't really happen because you're paying a lot more, you're paying a premium in the first place. So you've got the transportation you've got to take into account. You can also look at public transport for buses and things like that. Have you got good access to roads? Um, what's the area like in heavy rainfall? Um, is it prone to earthquakes? Is it prone to tsunamis? Or what's the history on the area? Because I remember on Negros Island, they'd only just finished, they were they were still um, they're on the hardcore doing the road um, when we were there, and with less than a year later, it'd been struck by earthquakes, and it had destroyed a lot of the stuff we'd actually uh, been riding along. It was gone, you know. It's, the roads, huge cracks, and all sorts. It subsided, bridges gone, all sorts. So these are things to be aware of, um, especially if you've got a limited budget, <laughs> because. If your house disappeared into a into a hole created by an earthquake, it's gone. Um, most people don't have housing insurance, so those are the things I would look for when I, you know, if I was looking for a place in the Philippines. Um, Security-wise, generally, if you're near a bigger town, you don't have too many problems. Um, 
but research online, the, the worst places always have news stories because the, at some point there's been an expat killed or whatever and it hits the news. Um, when locals get killed every week, nobody seems to bat an eyelid because it's so common. Um, a lot of figures aren't even uh, what I call real. I don't think they account for half the stuff that goes on. So just be aware of these things. Have a read up on it. Use things like the uh, the, the Filipino newspapers, like the Cebu's, like Sun Star. Um, what else is there? There's, there's different ones. You can find them online. Go on, the, go on a forum and ask because I'll tell you which ones are relevant for that area you're looking at. But that's an important bit. The other ones, internet, because most people seem to live on the net these days. Be aware. Different internets work better in different areas. So you can have some that somebody goes, oh yeah, mine's really high speed, no problems. And then we use it in your area, it doesn't work. Um, I've had it myself, even with um, two different types from the same provider. Um, because I've got to admit, I do like the uh, antenna, antenna version of the broadband. What it is, is it's just on a pole a little uh, trans, uh, transceiver and it just goes on the mast and that's it on the telephone lines the amount of times my telephone lines have been down I, I give up counting I've had them where one of the neighbors wanted to cut it down for uh, for using for a laundry because he thought nobody was actually using it it's because the telegraph pole had gone over and nobody come to fix it and that's pretty normal so Internet, do a bit of research on. Um, find out who's got internet in the area and what they're using. Um, it is improving, but then when we have a natural disaster, it decreases again uh, until they repair and upgrade the infrastructure, which is never that fast in the Philippines. It's always slow. A lot of the telephone exchanges are already maxed out already anyway, and they haven't been upgraded. So just be aware of those things. That's why I like the antenna box because it's not going by a telephone line. Um, then pretty much I think that covers most things because you you know medically where to go you, and you need to do a bit of research on what you're going to do with your time. Because um, like I said people get bored very quickly. They, they assume they're going to do this and that and then after 6-12 months the novelty's worn off and they've gone from holiday mode into um, sitting on the computer and going down the pub every day, um, which isn't healthy. So look for things to keep you occupied. It doesn't have to involve anybody else. It's nice if it does. But for me, I like things like photography. Um, fishing I enjoy, but I never really found anybody that actually went fishing. The only guy... Uh, the only guy I actually knew that went fishing in Cebu itself on, you know, lake fishing, um, disappeared. He ripped, ripped a few expats off and went off with their money. So, yeah, um, you got to find hobbies to keep you busy. Motorbike riding I like. Um, keep yourself occupied. And these are things you want to be looking at. Write a list down of what you want to find on your fact-finding tools. And and work towards that. Alright, thanks for watching.